so in this video you will answer the question i have on the screen so the question says that a machine handle is connected to the shaft at b determine the moment produced by the 15 newton force about point b i'll read over again a machine handle is connected to a shaft at b Determine the moment produced by the 15 newton force about point B. So you are going to determine the moment okay, produced by this 15 newton force about what point B. So this is the system that I have here. So we've been given this distance here, and then this horizontal distance here, and then we have this trend and the four here. So there are actually three ways to answer this question. You can use the scalar approach, the force component approach, and then the vector approach. But in this video, I'm going to use the I'm going to use the vector approach and then the scalar approach. Okay, so let's go ahead. So when you're using the vector approach, you know you need to represent the force in the vector form. So you have the the moment. So you have the moment. MO okay, in a vector form to be equal to the force vector times the position vector. Okay, so this is what you will need. So if you want to use the vector approach, you have to represent the force in the vector form and then get the position vector. Okay, so I'm going to do this. So looking at this system here, okay, I'm going to draw the force. If I have the force here, this 15 newton time so this force here this 15 newton force here will have what a y component sorry an x component and then a y component okay the y will be negative because it's moving the negative y as a direction okay so it will have an x component and then a y component so you know that this force will make an angle theta with the horizontal okay so this force will make will have an x component and a y component so we are going to find this x and the y component and then that will give us the vector form of what the force but before then we can't find this x and the y component without knowing this angle so what then are you going to do that means you have to find the angle theta so i'm going to find the angle theta let's look at this trend of for here these two values give me these two values here are to help us to get this angle theta so you have something like this okay so i have my three here and then i have my i have three here and then i have four here and the angle theta is what here okay so this trend four here is just to tell you the angle that these values make with the horizontal is that same angle that this force also makes it work the horizontal so these values here to help us find the angle that the force makes it work the horizontal so i'm going to find this theta here you can use tan so you use so which is what opposite over what adjacent this is the opposite this is the adjacent so that would be tan of theta equals opposite three over so theta will be equal to the tan inverse of 3 over 4. Okay, and then that should give me tan inverse of 3 over 4. Okay, so that should give me 36.87. That give me 36.87 degrees. So this is the angle theta that we have here now. Okay, so let me write this here. Theta equals 36.87. Okay, so now that we have theta here, okay, we are going to draw the force system. So this is how the force system will be. Same as I represented the trend in the form. So this is my theta. Okay, and then this is the x component. And then the y component but it is moving in the direction of the force so the y will be what negative 
since it is moving the negative y at this direction. So if you want to find this angle, okay. So you know the angle equals what? 36. Eight, seven. Okay, so now let's let me clean this part. Okay, so comparing this to this, you see that they are almost the same, just that the value is there and then the four are all different. So these values here just help us to get the angle here, then from there we don't need these values again. So we now know that the angle is what 36.87. Okay, so since you know the angle, you can find the x and then the y component. This is the 15. Meeting force. Okay, so if you want to find the x component, the x here is what adjacent. So you can use uh, tan here. Okay, so that will be okay. So let's use cos. So cos 36.87 we got what adjacent over hypotenuse that will be x over hypotenuse which is what 15 so the x part will be equal to 15 cos of what 36.87 and that should give us 15 cos 36.87 and that will give me 11. Point Nine nine nine. So let's make that one twelve. Okay. And then the y part. So the y part is opposite. So you have sine thirty six point eight seven. Okay, that's opposite. So that's negative y over hypotenuse fifteen. So that give me negative y to be equal to. 15 sine of 36.87. Okay, so that will give me, let's do this. So 15 sine of 36.87. Okay, so that gives me 9.00. So that's exactly 9. But because of this negative, you are going to divide it both sides by what negative one. So at the end, you will get the y to be equal to negative 9. Okay, so you've gotten the x and then the y component of this force. So now you can represent this force in a vector form. So now how the, the force vector, this force vector here, to be equal to 12 in the x as a direction, negative 9 in the y, and then 0 in the z. Okay, so now you now know the force vector. Okay, so since you now know the force vector, you will need the position vector out. R. Okay, you need the position vector R, which is this R here. So this R here, for you to get it easily, okay, just start from the point that you are finding the moment for. Okay, so just stand on this point B here. And then try to locate the force from what that point. So if I want to locate this this point B here, okay, I can move from this direction here. Okay, I can move from this direction here. Okay, when I get to where the force is, I'll stop. Then I'll move upwards to locate the force. So you see that this is the direction that I moved to locate the force. Okay, or you can also move this way. From this point, you move this direction upwards. When you get here, then you try to what, locate the force. Okay, so you see that they are almost they are all, they are all, they are the same. Okay, so when you have when you do that, you have this to be the y component. Okay, because you are moving upwards like this. So you are moving in this direction, and then this direction. So this will be the y part. Okay. And then this will be the x part, right? Because of the direction of the x part, it's what negative x. It is moving the negative x as its direction, and this will be what positive y as its direction. So before you're able to locate this force, you moved to the left side, okay? You moved on the negative x axis 
with this distance 200 watt millimeters and then move to the move on the, the positive y as it's trying there on 50 millimeters before you can locate this force so now let's write down the component here so the r so this is the force vector okay so the r the r will be equal to so before you can locate this force you move on the negative x axis direction a distance of what 200 millimeters or a length of 200 millimeters so let me write my 200 down okay so i have my 200 here okay so this is my 200 and removed that's another 200 and removed 250 okay 250 and then the Z as the direction you didn't move any distance. So for this to be easy, okay, let's bring this millimeter down. So 200 millimeter is equal to 200 times 10 to the power minus 3 because milli means to the power minus 3. So that gives me 0 0.2 meter and then 250 millimeters. You give me 350 times 10 to the power minus 3 that would be 0 0.35 okay so now you will have minus 0 0.2 here and then 0 0.35 now so you have what 0 here okay so now that we have the simplified form we can now go ahead and then, then find for the cross product of the two vectors okay so now let's find for the cross product okay so we are going to represent this in the matrix form so i have my i the g and then the k so for the f i'll have 12 and then minus 9 and 0 and then for the r i'll have minus 0 0.2 0 0.35 and then 0. So now we go ahead and then simplify this. Okay, so I'm going to find the let's see the determinant of this. So when I take i, I will have minus 9 and then 0. And when I take okay, so minus 9 and 0 and also 0 0.35 and then 0. Okay, so minus the g. When I take J2, I'll have 12 and then 0 and then minus 0 0.2 and then 0. Okay, now take K. So with the K2, I'll have 12 minus 9 and then minus 0 0.2 and then 0 0.35. Okay, so this is what I have for the K part. So now let's Simplify this negative 9 times 0 will be 0, 0 0.35 times 0 also be 0. So I have 0 i and then 12 times 0 will be 0, negative 0 0.2 times 0 also be 0. So I have minus 0 g. Okay, so let's look at the k part. So for the k part, I will have 12 times 0 0.35. So 12 times 0 0.35 that give me 4.2. So 4.2 minus, minus 0 0.2 times minus 9. So that give me 1.8. Okay. So that's what I have for the k part. So let's simplify that value there. So 4.2 minus 1.8. This will give me 2.4. So I have 0i minus 0j plus 2.4 k newton meter okay so this is what i have so and then you have our moment to be equal to 2.4 newton meter okay this is because you have to take the magnitude of this vector that you have here okay when you take the magnitude of this vector that gives us the value the actual value for the 
moment okay so when you take the magnitude of 2.4 that will just be like root of 2.4 all squared so when you do this the squared will cancel out and then you still have what 2.4 so this will then be the moment so we have what 2.4 newton meter